Um, so, but well, let's start talking about anti-siphon mm -hmm. training because that's really what I think people want to know about. And I want them to know about it because I think it's a valuable resource. And we're also going to be telling uh, in, a, in another venue, we're going to talk about anti-siphon to uh, hiring managers, right? Because that's kind of the other nice. side of the equation, right? Because if we want folks to uh, consider taking advantage of, of this new certification, well, now we got to get hiring managers to recognize <laughs> that, that it's valuable, yeah. right? So we're going to have that other conversation some other time, but just want to let everybody know like that that's a valuable part of the conversation that is going to happen. But John, why yeah. did you even start this? I mean, what, what, what's going on in your head? COVID actually. Um, so COVID, um, so I had traveled for a long time and I taught like anywhere between 12 to 17 times a year. Um, towards the end, I was down to nine and I had been away from my family from a long, for a long time. And whenever I retired from that, I was ready to be done. I don't want to get on airplanes. I don't want to teach. I don't want to, um, <laughs> you know, we, I was talking about it earlier with somebody about, you know, the InfoSec luminary, InfoSec rock star thing. Um, there's a bunch of people, that's not me. And I, I've come to peace with being quote unquote, a luminary being a rock star, whatever the hell it is that people want to do it. And I was cool with just never doing that again, ever. And um, what happened was COVID hit. And at Black Hills Information Security, we had at the time COVID hit, I think we had like 68 employees. And we are now at like 90 some, we've grown quite a bit. And whenever something happens where all of a sudden, every single engagement is like canceled, over the next like 30, 45 days, you panic. And being a monkey um, that's lost his tail and came down from the trees, you start <laughs> throwing poop at the wall and seeing what sticks. <laughs> so we're like, how are we going to make money? How are we going to survive as a company? And how can we open up alternative revenue streams? One of them was starting a security operations center, um, which has been also successful, that poop stuck. And then we did training. And when we started doing the training, um, we really focused on people that were at home. They couldn't go into the office and people who were unemployed and making that training as accessible and the pay what you can model to make it just easy for people to get in. And it stuck and it took off. Uh, the first time we did the pay what you can training, we had 5,000 people. That's a lot of people. And then we moved into cloud and all kinds of other stuff. So it became an, a revenue stream for BHIS and for our testers and the people that wanted to do this. Not that we needed it at the end of the day for COVID, everything worked out really, really well for the company, but it all started because we were panicky and we started doing things because it's been so successful as a business owner, I'd be an idiot if I'm like, well, that's done, let's move on. Um, we're gonna keep going. So John, let me ask you this, uh, cause you know, some of our audience probably doesn't know about any siphon and what that training is and how it's yeah. different. So a lot of the audience already knows me. Uh, I, I do a lot of certification training. It's a lot yep. of book work. It's a lot of memorization. It's a lot of passing an ABCD test at the end of the day yep. to say, yep. Hey, I know enough to be a basic level cybersecurity analyst or a basic level yep. pen tester or something like that. How is your training different? What does it look like to the end user? So a couple of things, one, um, you know, the quality of the training is going to be on par with any other training organization you will take training from. But a difference is instead of it being long form, we really try to stick to focused like two day maximum sessions, right? So if you're going to do breaching the cloud with Bo, it's going to be a two day session. If you're going to do web app pen testing essential skills with like BB, it's going to be a two day session, keeping it really hyper focused. Number one, number two, hands on are huge. Um, we're huge believers and you just can't learn just by death by PowerPoint. You need to have people get hands on. And for me, with our classes like applied purple teaming with uh, Jordan and Kent, you know, you're learning how to do purple teaming and running these tools and detecting these things in an environment and making sure it's as hands on as possible uh, for the different labs. Now, there's lots of training that does that. <laughs>